Welcome to another Sunday Million Highlight Show. We've got the very best of the most exciting, biggest regular tournament on the poker calendar. This one from the 24th of November 2013. 7,107 runners generating that big 1.4 million plus prize pool, all from 215 buy-ins or less. And here are the nine players, skillful enough and lucky enough to make the final table. And El Pipsy leads the way with over 20 million, a pretty big stack at this stage. Several short stacks as we start the action. We're going to jump into hand 11. 250, 500,000 will be your blinds. And we'll see if we get off to the usual dramatic start. We do have some very short stacks. This is going to be a little bit crash bang, I think, for the first few hands. It does sometimes happen with the Sunday million, people hanging on for the big money in the final table. You get a decent amount of short stacks. One of them is Ole Casper, who isn't quite all in, but might as well be. Just four big blinds. And action folded around to the blinds. Everyone gets out of the way. And it will fall on De Camps. Or De Combe, if he's of French persuasion. With the ace 10, more than good enough. He gets it in, and we'll have a 60 40 type deal. And the 40 is Ole Casper's chances of staying in this tournament. Doesn't look too clever at the moment. Needs to see some paint. On the turn, a diamond will work. So a king, jack, or diamond on the river. And a king it is. Only Casper plays his get-out-of-jail-free card. And he will advance to more tournament poker, as opposed to his bedroom to cry. Hand 17, still 250, 500,000. I can tell you these nine have got $11,000 locked up for ninth. But... If you want to talk money jumps, first place is over $200,000. So these decisions really matter. Pretty straightforward decision for Ole Casper here. He's going to try and run this small stack up into something a lot more significant. He gets to shove it in over L. Pipsy's open with sixes. And L. Pipsy's going to have to call off 2.8 million to win a lot more than that against the short stack. He does that, and Ole Kasper, if he can hold with these nines, will be right back in this after being one of the shortest, if not the shortest stacks. Pretty nice flop for the nines. He has the hearts covered. So just a six on this river, and Jack of Hearts is absolutely fine. His flush means that the nines hold up to nearly nine million now. On we go, hand 21. And it is El Major's chance to uh, get his small stack in. Queen nine suited in the cutoff with uh, less than seven big blinds. Another all in from Decom and a decision for Jar Wise. But really no decision, really strong hand, two all ins. And he does make that call. So a fantastic spot for Jar Wise from the UK. Although, as you can see, with two other players, he actually uh, doesn't hold more than half the time, interestingly. Holds through this flop, though, trying to knock out two players in one. Flush draw for El Major. That helps. And <laughs> the Jack of Clubs really helps. So, Jarwise is going to lose that one, but still stay alive. El Major is going to knock out Decom. Decom, a little bit unlucky to find that spot with the big blind having a hand behind. And the Norwegian player is our first elimination from the final. $11,000 for him. And we'll continue eight-handed. Hand 23. Still playing 250, 500,000. And L. Pipsy from Belgium, who is still your chip leader. No one near as big a chip leader as when he came into this final table. And he may have even less after this. Bluff too much with the aces. Probably just trying to figure out how to get paid here. Al Pipsy's actually limped the button. It took me a while to realise that unconventionally, but somewhat interestingly. Perhaps didn't want to get shoved on and have to call off 
with uh, the stacks the way they are. Well, bluff too much doesn't have to bluff at all. Top set is pretty nice. It's one of those hands top set with aces that it's quite often hard to get paid on because you just absolutely crush the deck. Al Pipsy has a little bit of something. Gut shot and backdoor hearts and two high cards, I guess. Bluff too much will go ahead and bet. <laughs> it's one of those where you think, well, I'm going to bet here. I'm going to get fold most of the time. and It's very boring because my hand's so great. But if I don't bet, it's just really weird because there's an ace on board and I was the preflop raiser, so I'll bet. And he'll just fold. No, he hasn't. He hasn't folded. Brilliant. 6.7 in the middle. Al Pipsy will see one card, and it could be a bad card for him to see. He's now going to figure he beats all of Bluff Too Much's bluffs. doesn't actually beat any of his value hands though and he does uh, doesn't give away any more money so Al Pipsy dodges not just a bullet but three of them there bluff too much takes it down with a set of aces and will be your new chip leader still in the action pack 250 500 blind level I know it's got a lot of fans always a fun and frantic one it hasn't really got a lot of blind levels don't have fans I'm just trying to Spice it up. Jar Wise looking for something to shove. Pretty short stacked after those nines got cracked. He will shove in the king four suited and he will take four folds after that if he can get them. I think you and I know he's not going to get them. Delabine from Holland with ace king in the blinds has one of the easier decisions he'll have had in this tournament. Jar Wise looking to get lucky needs clubs or fours or something well there's one club don't like his chances too much so far though both of these players pretty much all in a 10 would chop it up so Joe Wise picks up some more outs two of spades is the ultimate blank Delabine wins this one and Joe Wise is crippled eight players left but maybe seven very soon at the final table and there's only one thing better than playing the Sunday Million it's playing it for free. We'll give you your weekly shot at a free seat. I will give you the password to the free roll later in the show. Now, just as Rafa Nadal has resurrected his career after injury, so would Jar Wise resurrect his final table tournament after a crippling blow by, look at that, up from 88,000 to 800,000. Seriously, I work all night on this script, so a little bit more appreciation when you get some gold like that. Wouldn't go amiss, would it? Jar Wise has the luxury of folding. Look at him go with his one big blind. <laughs> it can be done. It has been done. It has been done. Peter de Corva at the EPT Monte Carlo Grand Final a few years ago and Michael Martin in London both came back from about one blind at a final table. So don't rule it out. Meanwhile, two of the bigger stacks, sort of. Ole Casper with just under 9 million and Bluff Too Much with 15.7 will battle in the blinds. And this is going to be a little bit tough for Ole Casper if he decides to get busy here because Bluff Too Much didn't raise preflop and so it's tough for him to have an ace in the blinds. He's now going to slow play the flop. And Bluff too much, really hoping Ole Casper fires at this one, which he does. Now, I know that a lot of you that watch are very, very keen on spelling, grammar, punctuation and things like that. I do apologize that Bluff too much only has one O. I'm trying to get confirmation on whether Bluff too much was actually gone when he registered. Or whether he just made a mistake. The single F, I just don't have an explanation for. Ole Casper doesn't want to fire at this one again, except that he does. You can understand him trying to take this pot away. I mean, what does Bluff too much have? He didn't raise pre-flop and he didn't bet the flop. Interestingly, he didn't even raise the turn or river. He'll be content just to take this one down after showing the trips up to 19 plus million. 
He's your chip leader right now, but we've got a lot of kind of 10-ish, a little bit over 10 big blind stacks. So I think this level is going to see a lot of action and a lot of players eliminated. You can understand them playing super cautiously. The money jumps are crazy. We have $17,000 locked up for eighth and then over $200,000 for first. Jar Wise trying to pull off the miracle of miracles. He was down to about a, I don't know, 20% of a big blind, 0.2 or something. He's now up to one big blind. He's picked up a pocket pair. Sadly, with one big blind, you don't have a lot of fold equity. So he is going to have to make this stand up against three opponents. Any six will do. He actually had the best hand going to the flop. He doesn't anymore. Ole Casper picks up top pair. Gets a couple of checks. Now, with this kind of board, even though it's a dry side pot, he's probably going to want to bet because he doesn't want someone free rolling with a rubbish spade, which the seven of spades definitely counts off as. And Delabine should fold, and he does. So, Jar Wise finally on the verge of elimination, unless he can really get clever here well that's pretty clever that is pretty clever this could be happening there's a lot of fun one way or the other jar wise from the uk down to eighty-eight thousand, way less than one big blind now finds himself up to the giddy heights of five big blinds it's on it's on like donkey kong which interestingly nintendo tried to copyright a few years ago they literally tried to copyright the phrase it's on like donkey kong Outrageous. El Pipsy, 87, has uh, pocket kings. And makes a raise. Somebody said to me the other day, on it like a bonnet. I thought that was quite clever. Probably quite old, but... I, I, I run about five to six years behind popular culture. El Major has a very easy shove with ten big blinds and pocket tens. And uh, is... Well, ridiculously unlucky to run into pocket kings, of course. And needs to get lucky. El Pipsy looking to re-establish his chip lead at this final table. He came in as chip leader. He may well be that again after this hand. El Major needs, needs to pull a jar wise on this one. Needs a 10. Or his race is run. And that's the way it goes. El Pipsy doing it in style with a full house on the river. El Major from Portugal is your eighth place finisher. $17,000 for him. Seven handed in the million. This is hand 46. We're still playing 300,000, 600,000. We still have several short stacks. Three stacks around about the 10 big blind level or a lot less. And we still have pocket kings. Ole Casper is the lucky man this time around. Now, Jar Wise does shove, and this uh, exciting adventure in short stack heroics may well be coming to an end. He's going to be gutted to see Kings. Doesn't even really have a sweat here. Needs to get super lucky with this flop. In fact, I think Kings versus King 3. <laughs> Look at that flop. That, uh, an, on another day, would be great, wouldn't it? Kings versus King 3 is one of the most dominating matchups pre flop in Holden, I think. And it is going to hold for Ole Kasper. And he will knock out Jar Wise, who fought valiantly. But the UK player finishes with $30,500 in seventh. And we are six-handed. So we've done some stack consolidation, but we're still pretty short stacked. It's interesting if you watch a lot of these Sunday Millions, how much it varies in terms of stack depth early on. Sometimes we arrive at the final table reasonably deep stacked with a couple of shorties, but today the whole tournament is pretty shallow. Vizquel opens with the ace 10. Interesting decision to open here and not to shove. He had about mm, a little bit over 15 big blinds. So the question is, what do you do when you get three bet? Well, that decision is slightly spoiled by the fact it's gone crazy behind him. El Pipsy re-raises with jacks and Ole Kasper has kings again the more observant of you will have noticed that this is the very next hand back-to-back -back pocket kings at a major final table it's the stuff dreams are made of and El Pipsy gets away from it yikes 
I mean, I'm not even sure if he should fold there with the amount of money that was in the pot. Now that <laughs> you can see it's kings, he looks like a genius. Extraordinary scenes here at the million final table. It's one thing to be lucky enough to get kings back to back. You've got to be super good to get paid twice, I guess. That's the really hard part. We're still in the action pack. 300, 600 level. Viscale will shove sevens. Now, if seven is his lucky number, he doesn't even have to watch this run out, does he? He's obviously going to win. Seven, th seven million seven hundred thousand in his stack. Seven, seven in his hand. All his money in the middle, and he is in a race. El Pipsy with the ace king after that extraordinary jacks lay down. He will be all right if he doesn't win this one. Vizquel will not. Vizquel will be out. Good flop for the sevens, though. Fades the turn. Just needs to get through the river. And he will be up with the chip lead. And that's the way it goes. When you have a shallow final table like this, those big flips, well, it's the difference between elimination and the chip lead for Vizquel 17. We'll move things on a little bit with these same five players. This is hand 61. 400,000, 800,000 is your new blind level. And I think there's still going to be a lot of shoving going on. We're not seeing a lot of post-flop play in this edition of the million. El Pipsy staying active. Obviously not too affected by the money jump. Shoving A7 suited here with 12 big blinds. And Vizquel has a decision. More than half is stacked with the ace-10. He does make the call. Decent call. More decent when you consider the amount of money involved at the moment in the tournament. And uh, he's going to see that he is ahead and further ahead now. Things looking bad for El Pipsy. And things looking very bad now, as in terminal bad, as in you have to leave the tournament area, so you have been eliminated. El Pipsy, your fifth place finisher. $58,000 for the player from Belgium. Great tournament for him. We're four-handed. We are anticipation. Committed. Anonymous. Focused. Holding it in. Now, I wouldn't break a promise to you. We have to have been dating for at least three hours for me to do that. The password to the online poker show free roll, as promised, is Darren Elias. Darren Elias. All in lowercase, and that all happens on the 28th of November, 3.35 Eastern Standard Time. Win yourself a free seat to the million. It's free. Why wouldn't you? These four players are contesting the million title this week. Vizquel, 17, from Israel, is your chip lead, and he'd chip up a little bit over the next few hands. Bluff too much. Delabine and Ole Kasper trying to separate him from the title. Now, these four have $75,000 locked up, and I can tell you there would be no deal. No deal, people, at this final table. We're going to play straight up, and the first prize is $213,000. Big, big jump between fourth and first. Ole Kasper, the short stack right now, and he's made in a small opening raise. This is a bit surprising. With a hand as strong as Ace-3 suited, in the small blind with that stack you'd expect him to shove most of the time i think this probably is the effect of the money jumps even though he's the short stack doesn't want to put his stack at risk unless he has to and he's sort of fallen in between two stalls with that min raise still has the best hand on the flop love too much with the flush draw i casper will check <laughs> which is also i guess a little bit surprising given that uh, it's hard for Bluff too much to have much of that flop, but he's got himself into this weird situation with his stack now where putting any more money in the middle sort of commits him, or it should do. Queen on the turn double pairs the board. Ole Casper with ace high is still in front. He goes ahead and bets. And Bluff too much... I guess he might be thinking about a raise if he thinks Ole Casper is just weak here, but a lot of times I think he just has to fold. He does decide to call and try and hit the flush. It's 
Tough on this board, though. I mean, he could, you know, his flush could already be no good, and I Casper's so short stacked that he's often committed to this pot. We know he isn't because he just has ace high here. And uh, bluff too much. We'll now have to decide whether to bluff or not. Does decide to go ahead and bluff. It's an interesting bet because it is, a, I quite like this bet size. It is a bet size that looks like it wants a call, doesn't it? Perfectly credible for him to have a king or a queen and be betting it now. Ole Casper will fold and bluff too much will move up closer to Viscale, the chip leader. Hand 67, still 400, 800,000. And Ole Casper, after that pot, has been whittled away here, just under 6 million. Viscale will open the button to 1.6, and Bluff Too Much picks up eights. Now, here's where things get a little bit complicated for the players. So, there's a big jump between fourth and third 75,000 compared to 113,000. And Bluff Too Much, as he plays this hand, knows that Ole Casper is sitting there with less than 10 big blinds. Now, if that wasn't the case, if they'd done a deal, if there weren't big money jumps, then maybe Bluff Too Much would just shove those eights pre-flop. And, you know, you could argue he might, you know, possibly should do anyway, but you can completely understand him playing more conservative. It may well be the right thing to do as well. Because going broke from second place here, where the money jumps are so huge, and there is, uh, you know, a short stack and another shorter stack is uh, something of a disaster. So he's playing this one quietly. Check calls the flop. The scale, as you can see, has pretty much nothing. And, you know, put yourself in his seat. What would you do? You're playing a pot against the only player at the final table that can bust you. And you've got a difference of $140,000 there or thereabouts between fourth and first. It's not easy. Check, check, it goes on the turn. And four of diamonds on the river. Bluff too much would be really relieved to see that check on the turn. He'll know that he's winning a decent amount of the time now. And I think this is one of those these dwell checks. We've all done it. You sort of think for a while because you want it to look like you th you're you thinking about betting so that it dissuades them from betting or bluffing. I mean, I don't think it works at all, but we've all done it. Wow, Viscale bets here. This is kind of a weird bet. I mean, if you're going to bluff, why not bluff the turn? It does work. Well, bluff too much. Interesting hand. Kind of weird to fold the river. I guess he thought that Viscale was slow playing something big, but his line really didn't make too much sense. And uh, it really wasn't that expensive to find out either. But Bluff Too Much obviously wanting to preserve his stack. Fissel extends his chip lead with that bluff. 33.8 million as we watch hand 69. <laughs> Stop it at the back. Delabine will raise from the small blind. And Viscale will call. And Delabine will now find himself in the same situation Bluff Too Much did. So after being a little bit of a all-in fest, this final table's got much more interesting because they haven't done a deal. And because the money jumps are so big. Very, very hard for Delabine to kind of bluff here or, you know, commit himself at all because Ole Casper's sitting there short-stacked. And, you know, Delabine is, in, you know, if he goes out in third, uh, sorry, in fourth, when he should have gone out in third, he's made a $40,000 mistake. Viscale does call on the flop with the straight draw and does get it home on the turn, which in a lot of ways makes the hand a little bit less interesting because it would be interesting to see the pressure Viscale could have put on Delabine in position, being able to bust him. No fear from Delabine. He's going to keep firing. Unfortunately for him, he's firing into the nuts, or close to the nuts anyway. Four of diamonds is another blank, and Delabine has to shut up shop here. Not a great card to bluff, and he can't really put very much pressure on Viscale. And there is the ICM disaster waiting to happen if he goes broke here. 
I know we can see the whole cards, we can see that Viscal has a big hand, but I, that's not really relevant. The point is that he just can't he just can't bluff here. It's just a disaster if he gets called. Viscal is going to try and bet for value here, I'm sure. He does have the wheel. And he has been checked to. I think he should bet for value anyway. Perfectly possible that Delavine has an ace in this hand or something of that nature. He bets 4.7 million and Delavine gets out of the way. And Viscale is uh, running over things here, up to 40 million, well over half the chips in play. Well, this is one of those rare and beautiful situations which you rarely get into in tournament poker. Viscale can basically open raise every hand here uh, he just uh, can put so much pressure on the other players and when one of the short stack shoves like this he can call Ole Kasper finds a hand to shove with well it worked for Jar Wise earlier with the short stacks and sixes he'll need it to work here it is a flip the scale 17 with lots of chips able to make that call Ole Kasper not so much and not what he wanted to see on the floor the scale with the seven on the verge of eliminating Ole Kasper. He's been short stacked for a decent amount of this final table, but held on well. Unfortunately, can't win the key flip, and he finishes for $75,000 for him. Three-handed, and there looks like there's only one winner. Extraordinary chip lead to have three-handed for Fiscal 17. We have seen these things go wrong in the past, but He's a big favourite to win this right now. Delabine shoving from the button with ace three suited. Viscal has a pocket pair and gets to call and bluff too much. Will be delighted to fold and will be cheering none too quietly for Viscal's fours in this pot. It means a lot to him financially. Delabine needs to improve here. Eight of diamonds is no help, so just an ace on the river can keep him alive. Otherwise, this one is over for him. A three will not get it done. Delabine from Holland wins $113,000 for third, and we're heads up. Although the chances of it being a long heads up are not great. Bluff too much only has 5.8 blinds behind in hand number 90 here. It's going to be a pretty short heads up, pretty short final table, unless he can get super lucky in this one. Fiscal 17 makes the call and really has him dominated. Not what Bluff too much wanted to see in Fiscal's hand at all, a bigger jack. 75% of the time, this one is over. <laughs> when you're running good, you're running good. Bluff too much, can't hit a spade anymore. Well, a forward chop it up and keep us playing. Viscal 17 on the cusp, and he does seal the win. Viscal 17 knocks out Bluff too much, just like he pretty much knocked out everyone else at the end. Really turned into a bit of a juggernaut, didn't it, for the Israeli player. A fantastic win for him. He wins the Sunday Million straight up with no deal. Pretty rare these days. $213,214 is the result of that. Bluff too much, a great tournament in second, $156,000. Delabine in third, $113,000. Completes the six-figure payout, all for a $215 buy-in or less. Satellites running for the million all the time. No excuse not to get involved. I hope you've enjoyed this highlight show. There'll be another one for you this time next week. Until then, I'm Nick Wealthall. Take big care.